Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we could test out the new Kaleidos Alma Viva collection. This arrived at my house this morning and I really wasn't planning on filming any videos this week because as many of you know, I had a skin cancer removed from my scalp, which is why I'm wearing this headscarf. I have to keep it covered and I have stitches that are about this long in my part. So um, not a pleasant experience. Be sure you wear your sunscreen. I can't stress that enough. Thankfully, they were able to get all of the skin cancer. It didn't go deep, it just went wide. So I have a big area here that I'm gonna have to keep covered for a little while. Right now having stitches in that area means that it kind of feels like I'm wearing a too tight ponytail. It gives me a little bit of a headache. Honestly, I haven't been feeling the best, but when I saw this collection come in, I thought, you know, makeup is just such a great distraction when you're not feeling well and you just kind of want to dive in and play and just forget about everything for a while. It just, I don't know, it makes me feel better. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I figured we could test everything out and I do want to compare the new collection, especially the eyeshadow palettes to the previous ones because I've seen a lot of different comments online saying that they look really, really similar. So that's what we're going to do today. If that sounds good, then why don't we go ahead and get to it? All right. So as I'm unpacking everything, we have two new eyeshadow quads. We also have four of their single blushes in new shades and some lip glosses, which is a first for them. They've always had had like their lip clays, which are sort of more like a matte liquid lipstick. I'm definitely here for the lip glosses. These look amazing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the eyeshadow palettes first. The packaging is beautiful as always. These come in just gorgeous pink and purple shades. The palettes are covered in a silky fabric and they have the logo embroidered on them. They're really soft and kind of squishy feeling. And we have one that's neutral and one that's more purple tones. So let's look at the neutral one first. This one is called Venus Trap and you have beautiful cool toned taupey shades. They're brown, but they lean a little bit gray. The formula feels outstanding, just like all of their palettes. The mattes are just one of the most velvety formulas that I've ever tried. The shimmer is, of course, just beautiful and radiant and glowy. So I've always loved their eyeshadow formula. I think it's wonderful. I think it performs really well. And then we have Twilight Rush, and this one is beautiful, cooler toned purple, lavender, a little bit of gray in there as well. And this one is just equally as stunning. I think I want to try this one on my eyes today because it's just speaking to me. It's absolutely gorgeous. But before we move on to the blushes, let me just quickly show you guys guys a couple of comparisons between the new palettes and some of their older ones because like I said there have been people saying that there's tons of overlap and I want to see like how true that is. It's sometimes hard to tell when you're just looking at eyeshadows in a pan. So first let's go back to their previous collection. We had Cold Brew and Black Jasmine. So I want to quickly compare Cold Brew to Venus Trap in the new collection and looking at these two side by side I really think that Cold Brew is a lot warmer. You have those really kind of more rich browns, whereas Venus Trap in the new collection is way more cool toned. So if you're a fan of cool tones, I say definitely check out Venus Trap over Cold Brew. I really don't feel like these are the same at all. And then next let's look at Black Jasmine versus the new Twilight Rush. So again, not really seeing overlap here. Black Jasmine is more of a gray and silver palette. You have a jet black shade in here, as well as a beautiful sparkling silver. It doesn't have any purple or lavender in it whatsoever. So again, I think Black Jasmine is quite a bit different than Twilight Rush in my opinion. And then from another collection, we have Glowing Iris and Flowing Haze. So looking at Glowing Iris next to Twilight Rush, the Glowing Iris is definitely a lot more purple. It's bolder and brighter. And I think Twilight Rush is a lot more muted. It's more pinky purple or lavender, whereas the Glowing Iris shades are definitely more of a blue-based purple they're just a lot more vibrant. So I definitely see quite a bit of difference here as well. And then we also have Flowing Haze. And this one I want to compare to both of the new palettes because I feel like there's elements of both of them in this one. You have um, one column on the left of the more neutral shades. And then on the right, you have the more purpley lavender 
colors. So again, I think with this one, you're getting the closest to the two new palettes, but I still don't see any exact dupe shades. And even if you do have Flowing Haze from a previous collection, I don't know if it's all that similar to the new ones to make you feel like, you know, you'd be getting some overlapping shades because it is still a little bit different. Although I would say out of all of the previous palettes, this one is definitely the closest. So you guys will have to let me know down in the comments below. Do you really think that they're that similar? I found that a lot of the comments that I've been seeing are just from people who are a little bit upset that Kaleidos kind of has moved away from brighter, bolder colors, and they've been doing a lot of neutrals lately. So I'd love to hear your opinion on that as well. As somebody who loves and wears neutrals very often, I'm all for it. I do like color every once in a while, but I definitely love a neutral collection. So love to hear your thoughts on that. Next up, let's take a look at the blushes. So these come in pretty much the same packaging as the eyeshadow palettes. It's absolutely beautiful. No complaints on the packaging whatsoever. They just feel so luxurious and high end, especially for the price that you're paying. And then inside you're getting some very, very pale pinks and neutrals. And I kind of see this as a nod to K-beauty makeup or just Asian beauty beauty in general. There are a lot of really, really pale blushes on the market. It's kind of a trend right now. These would fit in perfectly with that. But at the same time, if you don't have a very fair skin tone, these are likely not going to show up on you. So I do wish that even if they wanted to release some really pale shades, which I do think there is a market for because those of us who are more fair, it can be hard to find a cooler toned, really light blush. So I do see the market for it, but at the same time, it would have been nice if maybe they released like a deeper purple maybe in this collection to complement the purple palette or just at least one other option for those with deeper skin tones because I feel like they are going to miss out on the blushes in this collection. That being said, um, the last time they released their mono blushes, they did have a lot of deeper options. In fact, some of these I felt like were too deep for me to wear. So if you have a deeper skin tone, they do have some deeper options available on their website just from previous collections. They have some gorgeous deeper reds and pinks and neutral shades. So if these new collection ones are just a little bit too light for you, I would definitely check out their previous collection because they have launched deeper colors in the past. So anyway, let's move on to, I think the product that I am most excited about, and these are the Untamed Glow Glossy Lip Glaze. So just look at this packaging. I'm gonna show it to you guys up close. It is so heavy, so luxurious for $16. I feel like that's just a couple bucks more than what you would pay at the drugstore. And this packaging looks like a $30 and up type of a lip gloss. It's honestly like a work of art. And I know like looking at it through the camera, you can't feel the weight of it and just how high end and luxurious it feels in your hand. But I was honestly wowed when I took these out of the box and I see so much makeup on a daily basis that it kind of is taking a lot to wow me these days but this packaging is just on another level. And the formula of these also feels incredible. I cannot wait to try this on. It feels like that very cushiony, silky kind of a lip gloss. It's not sticky in the slightest bit, and they really do have that beautiful glazed sort of a finish. So I'm gonna be trying on all the colors for you guys so we can see what they look like on the lips. But um, why don't we go ahead and I guess just get started with eyes first. I did apply foundation already, and I already did my brows. So like I said, I think I'm gonna try on on Twilight Rush today. So let me just zoom you guys in a little bit. All right, I'm gonna start out with this pale shade right down here on the bottom. Like I mentioned before, I just love their formula. I think it's really, really blendable and soft, but at the same time, it's not so blendable that it just completely blends away as you're working with it. I mean, even this really pale shade, you can see it nicely and it has good adhesion to the skin. This is such a fun collection. I'm actually starting to feel better already. Yesterday, when I first had the procedure done and I had the stitches put in, it hurt to even talk or smile because I felt like every time I moved, it would like pull at my scalp. I was talking to my husband and he made me laugh and I was just like, no, stop, like don't make me smile <laughs> because even now it, like, it hurts a little bit to smile. So I'm probably gonna try not to do that, but, but yeah, it was pretty intense. All right, next up, I'm gonna deepen things up with this gray shade right here in the upper corner. I'm just gonna focus this one more toward the outer edge of my eye. Yeah, even this one is just blending out beautifully. There's no patchiness, even though it's a slightly deeper color. 
it's just so beautiful. And I don't know if I mentioned these quads are $22. So again, not that bad. I feel like they're somewhere in between like a drugstore price and a high end. And when you look at some of the high end brands at Sephora that charge like 40 or $50 or even more for a quad, it's crazy because the formulas there aren't even as good as this one and they charge so much more for them. So you really cannot go wrong with these from the packaging to the formulas, to the price, it's just so good. All right, I think I'm just gonna add like the tiniest little bit of this really deep shade down here. I'm not gonna put too much, just a little. And again, I'm just gonna focus this right at the very outer edge, just to kind of smoke things up a little bit. The shade is actually a matte, but it has those little micro glitters in it. I just find that once you blend it, you don't really see those, they kind of, brush away. So I'm honestly not even sure why brands put those in because they don't really show up. So it's kind of weird. All right. And then for the shimmer shade, I'm just going to put down some of my NYX glitter primer first. I put this down with every single shimmer shade I use. It just helps them to pop a little bit more and kind of gives that wet look. All right, let's see what this looks like on. I always, in my experience, have found that their shimmers look even prettier on the eye than they do in the pan. So, oh yeah, look at that. It has a little bit of a shift to it. It is so stunning. Wow. I love this and it applied beautifully. There was no fallout. I did use the glitter primer, so I guess that's something to keep in mind. But sometimes even when I do use the glitter primer, there's still some glitter fallout in some shadows. And with this one, there wasn't. So that's great. All right, just put it over here. Yeah, this is applying so nicely. And I love the combo of purple and gray. I just think they complement each other so beautifully. All right, so eyes are done. I'm just gonna go ahead and put some mascara on. I'll be right back. All right, moving on to blush. I really wanna try the shade Pale Rose. I think it'll go really well with the eye look. It is a really light pink, so I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up, but in a way, it kind of reminds me of the Lorac blush tinge that I've talked about before here on my channel. It's a very pale pink, just like this one. And I often like to wear it when I'm wearing a little bit more of a smoky eye because that way I don't feel like my cheeks are competing with my eye look. And I do think really pale blushes do have a place. I know that blush is really trendy right now and everybody is doing like these really blush heavy looks, but there's something to be said too for just like a little wash of color. It just looks so natural in person. I think a lot of people kind of load on the blush, especially those of us who are on camera, because it shows up better and it can be hard to see lighter colors like this, but in person, it's actually stunning. If you have a lighter skin tone, I do think that a pale blush can be really beautiful. And if it doesn't show up as much as you want on the first pass, just go in and add a little bit more. You can definitely build it up and get it to show a little bit more vibrantly. So it's just like a barely their blush look. But like I said before, I think it definitely has its place, especially if you do a bolder or more dramatic eye, then you can always just keep your cheeks a little bit more subtle. So I actually love this color. I think it is gorgeous. It's also perfect for anyone who is afraid of blush or if you don't like to wear too much or you're afraid of overdoing it, you really can't overdo this. Like I just put on three layers and it still doesn't look super dramatic. And by the way, this formula is Phenomenal. It is just so silky and smooth and it kind of blends into the skin rather than sitting on top. So again, it's gonna give you that really seamless and really natural look. So I'm loving that. All right, let's move on to the lip glosses. I am so excited for these. So uh, let's start out with the shade Skinny Dip first. So this one is going to be more of a nude. I really like the applicator too. It's kind of like a bent. It's flat on one side, but then it bends like that. It just makes sense that it has that little curve because that's sort of the way that you're applying it. So, oh wow. This is so silky. It has that really cushiony texture, like I was saying before. Not sticky at all. It's just like really plush and thick, really moisturizing. It almost has a gel-like feel to it. And it just feels like it's wrapping my lips in moisture. Like it's so good. It also has no fragrance to it at all. So if you're sensitive to lip fragrances, this is perfect. So anyway, here we have Skinny Dip. All right, then the next shade is Elixir. Next up is Pink Marquise. Then we have Hot Pursuit, which is more of a plummy brown. I really like this one. Then Last Smoke is kind of like a lavender mauve. 
Free Fall is a super pale lavender with a little bit of glitter. And then Penthouse is a sheer red with a little bit of glitter. So this one and the last one have glitter. The rest of them are just creams. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and just talk final thoughts really quick. Um, the eyeshadow palettes, I really love. I think both color stories are beautiful. Both are definitely right up my alley, something that I would definitely wear. And I also feel like they're not as close to the previous collections as we all thought that they were. They are in the sense that they're just neutrals. And I think some people might have been looking for some brighter stuff like their older collections were. And if that's the case, then yeah, you'll probably be disappointed with these eyeshadow palettes. But if you're a fan of neutrals and if you already own the other palettes, I do think that they're not that similar. As far as the blushes go, I do think you have to have a probably fair to light skin tone to be able to pull these off. But if you do, they're just absolutely gorgeous. If you do have a deeper skin tone, I would definitely recommend checking out their deeper blushes that they already have on their website because the formula is just phenomenal and there are several colors that will go with this collection. And then when it comes to the lip glosses, no complaints. I think these are out of this world gorgeous from the packaging to the formula to the shades that they come in. They just feel so nice and so hydrating. I keep feeling like I wanna rub my lips together because they just feel so good. So even if the eyeshadows or the blushes aren't speaking to you this time, definitely check these out because for 16 bucks, you are never gonna get a lip gloss that comes in this kind of luxurious packaging and just has this beautiful formula. So I think these are well worth it. Other than that, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this entire collection. What are you thinking? Are you planning on picking anything up? I'd love to hear your thoughts and thank you so much for spending time with me and for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it so much. Just the fact that you're here just means a lot to me. So thanks again. If you have a little bit of extra time and you'd like to check out some more of my videos, I'll just put a playlist right up here. You can check those out next. Also, if you're not subscribed and you like unsponsored, honest makeup reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all in my next one. Take care, guys. Bye.